Take your Bible, turn to John chapter 10. John chapter 10, we're going to read verses 1 through 6 in just a few minutes. And what you, It's a very familiar passage of Scripture, and Christ is speaking of Himself here. Uh, and it's, it's, a, it's a beautiful picture of Christ, what we see. Now, you know, there's many references of Christ in Scripture about being a shepherd. Well, we know that. He is known as the Good Shepherd, and He really is. But there are many, many references in Scripture, even in the Old Testament, before uh, Christ actually came, that refer to Christ as a shepherd or the good shepherd. One of the most uh, probably recognizable ones is Psalm chapter 23, where David says, the Lord is my what? The Lord is my shepherd. The Lord is my shepherd. The psalmist also said, we are the sheep of his pasture. You see how this imagery is, is, is all through the psalm, but it's all through the Bible. Look, Isaiah said, he tends his flock like a shepherd. Even Isaiah said that. Then we look in the book of Mark. You know, Christ had pity on the crowds because they were like sheep without a shepherd. There was this crowd in Mark's gospel, and they were hungry, and they were tired, and Christ had compassion on them because they were like sheep without a shepherd. Hebrews talks about the great shepherd. Peter called Christ the chief shepherd. In other words, the head guy. And he really was the head shepherd, the chief shepherd. He still is today. But there's imagery all through the Bible about Christ being a shepherd. And this parable tells us of the sympathy of the sheriff, uh, shepherd toward his sheep. Let's read together, starting in verse 1 of chapter 10 of John. It says, Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that entereth not by the door into the sheepfold, but climbeth up some other way, the same is a thief and a robber. But he that enters in by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. To him the porter opens, and the sheep hear his voice, and he calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. And he puts forth his own sheep. That he goes before them, and the sheep follow him, for they know his voice. And a stranger will they not follow, but will flee from him, for they know not the voice of the stranger. Verse 6 says, This parable spake Jesus unto them, but they understood not what things they, uh, they were which he spake unto them. Father, I pray that you would help us to understand this parable and help us to understand just how good a shepherd you are. Father, I pray that we would understand that you are the one who has our best interest at heart. Lord, you are truly a great shepherd. And I pray that we would see that and turn to you today and follow you for it's in your name we pray. Amen. Now look, there are some things that we have to identify here first before we go on any further. First of all, he talks about different things. The first thing right there in verse uh, 1, he says, Verily, verily, I say, He that entereth in not by the door into the sheepfold. What is a sheepfold? Have you ever stopped to think about that? Well, there were actually two types of sheepfold. There were those out uh, that naturally occurred out in the wilderness where they would take the, the sheep to, to graze. And maybe it was just an outcropping of rocks where the shepherd would go in and, and, uh, and he would call the sheep and they would follow him into this opening, into this rock enclosure, and, and they would there spend the night. He would bed the sheep down for the night. But there were others that were in town. There, the way it was set up is that most towns at that time had a big enclosure. It could have been a big room and a big building, or it could have just been a big pen out uh, on the outskirts of town. But all of the shepherds in that area that lived in that town would bring their sheep to that one pen. And it was still called a sheepfold. That's where the sheep were kept for the night. And so when Christ starts telling this parable, he says, you know, there are some people that try to get into the sheepfold by another method than going in through the gate. And he said, if you go in through the, the gate, then you're a shepherd. But if you don't, you're a thief and a robber. He didn't have anything good to say about it. And so the sheepfold was an enclosure that held the sheep for the night. All right? Uh, and, and some people have interpreted this as being the sheepfold as being the world. We're all sheep and we're all here in this world time. Some people have interpreted it as being the church. 
And some have interpreted it as being heaven. And you know, I guess in some form or another, you could probably equate the sheepfold to one of those because ultimately we are in the world. And ultimately, uh, those of us who are saved are in the church and, and will be in heaven one day. But you know what? Here's what he's talking about. He's talking about the followers of Jesus Christ. He's talking about those who recognize his voice. He is their shepherd. But he talks about the sheep as well. I mean, he could have been talking about mankind, or he could have been talking about uh, just those who belong to Jesus. He could have been talking to the Israelites. He said, you know what? The ones that hear my voice follow me. And he was talking to Israel when he was saying this, and he said, you know what? Those people that hear my voice and recognize it, they're my sheep, and they will follow me. But think about the implication of that for those who were Pharisees that did not follow him that did not hear his voice. You see, it was a bit of an indictment to them. And then, of course, he talks about the shepherd. And, of course, the shepherd is Christ. But let's put this in context. When we start thinking about this, Jesus was speaking in a context that was continued from the previous chapter. Now, in John uh, chapter 9... What was he talking about? Well, remember he was telling the story of the blind man who was at the gate of the synagogue and Christ gave him his sight. And, and so when the man went to the pool of Siloam and he washed his eyes, he could see, he came back, he told everybody, the Pharisees immediately called this man in and started to question him about what had happened and what they were really trying to do was trap Jesus and they couldn't do it because this man's testimony was so strong. And he finally started teaching them a thing or two. And they said, wait a minute, you're teaching us. We're the educated ones. You've been blind your whole life. You don't even have a trade. And you're trying to teach us, get out of here. And they kicked him out of the church. I still say that, you know what, getting kicked out of some church is probably a good thing. Depending on the church. But see, Christ, when he started telling this, he was telling it in the context of that man. He went back and found that man after he'd been kicked out of the church and he talked to him. And we spoke about that last Sunday night. You remember? And he said, do you believe on the Son of God? And he said, well, I don't know who he is. I, you know, tell me who he is. And, and Christ looked at him and said, you have both seen him and he is talking to you now. And remember what the man did? He fell to his feet. Uh, fell to the feet of Jesus and he worshiped Jesus. He believed. And then Jesus starts telling this parable of the shepherd and the sheep. So see, when we put this in context, he's speaking to the Jews of the time. He's, all, uh, he's also speaking to all of those who have accepted him, but he explains who the thieves are. Who are the thieves? Now remember, take it in context. He was talking about the episode where the blind man was healed and had been kicked out of the church. You know who the thieves were? They were the Pharisees. The Pharisees. The Pharisees were the ones who were trying to lead Israel astray. And they didn't come into the sheepfold by the gate. They were the ones trying to hop in over the fence. And Christ said, anybody that doesn't enter in through the gate is not a good shepherd, is not the shepherd, and they are thieves and they are robbers. And so the Pharisees were the false shepherds who rejected the man. And like I said, there were two kinds of sheepfolds, one out in the country and one in, in town. Now those in town, it was a room or it was a big enclosure of some kind. And in the morning, all of the shepherds, now all of those sheep herds were out there mixed together in that big pen. And it's a fascinating thing. People call sheep dumb animals, but they're not really as dumb as everybody thinks they are because when the shepherd that owns those sheep walks to that gate, he calls his sheep. He calls his sheep. Jesus said he calls them by name. You know what? That makes me feel good. I am one of Christ's sheep. I have accepted him. He has saved me. He knows my name. You know, I've met some famous people in my life, but he knows my name. Those famous people that I've met, they don't know my name. They don't know who I am. But Christ does. They recognize His voice. 
they would follow him to the pasture. And every shepherd that had sheep in that sheepfold could go in the mornings to that gate and just call out, and the sheep that belonged to that shepherd recognized his voice and they would follow. What lessons are learned from the shepherd and his sheep? Well, number one, Christ knows them. Christ knows his sheep, and it's great to be known by him. Now, I told you I'd met some famous people. I'm going to tell you a little story. Happened before Diane and I got married. We were engaged. She's, she's sitting over here grinning because <clears throat> she knows what's coming. Before we got married, we were already engaged. I was still living in North Carolina, and the closest airport to my house was Green, Greensboro, North Carolina. And so uh, Diane was going to come up and spend a few days with my parents and I in North Carolina, and we were going to plan the wedding, and we were going to do a lot of stuff. And, and so, you know, I went to pick her up uh, at, the, at the airport in Greensboro. She had gotten a flight out of Atlanta uh, to Greensboro. First time she'd ever flown. In fact, I think it was the last time you ever flew as well. <laughs> no, no, she's flown once since then. But anyway, uh, she, she flew up to Greensboro, and so I was there at the terminal in Greensboro waiting on her uh, plane to land, and as it turns out, we had an ice storm up there that day, and so they were, they were a little bit late landing uh, because they had to circle around Greensboro for a while for them to de-ice the runway and things of that nature. So I'm standing there, and at that time, I don't know how it is now, but at that time, this was in 1979, uh, the Greensboro Airport, there was this long hall that you would go from the waiting area of the terminal down to the baggage claim, and, and the outside wall of that uh, hall was glass, and they would pull the planes right up there to refuel them and unload them and load them and all that. So I was just standing there uh, at this wall in this big plate glass, and I was watching them unload and fuel planes and everything, and uh, all of a sudden, you know how you just sense that somebody is there. I, I looked to my left and I kind of looked down and there was a lady standing next to me. I, I, and I, I, you know, and she looked at me and she said, how are you? She was very, very nice. And I said, I'm doing, doing well and I hope you are. And she said, oh yeah, we're doing fine. And she said, oh, are you flying out somewhere or are you waiting on someone? She just started a conversation. And so I said, well, I'm waiting on someone. And she said, really? I said, yes, ma'am. My fiance is flying up from Georgia, and, and she's going to spend a few days with me and my parents. And she said, oh, you're getting married. And I said, well, yes, ma'am. And she said, well, congratulations. Now, the whole time I'm sitting here having a conversation with this lady, I'm thinking, you know what? This lady looks very familiar to me, but I cannot place where I've seen her before. And I'm really probably mistaken because this lady is rich. It was very obvious this lady had money because when I looked at her, she had these big old diamond earrings and she was wearing a full length mink coat that was, you could tell was a real mink coat. And I mean, she just, it just looked like she had money. The second thing that jumped out at me was this woman was gorgeous. She was beautiful. She had blonde hair down on her shoulders and she just had a pleasant smile and she, she was just a beautiful woman and she was rich. And I thought, I know I've seen this woman somewhere before but I don't know where I've seen her. And I can't imagine have ever, have ever having met this woman before. And so, you know, finally this gentleman came up and he said, well, are you ready? It's time for us to board. And she said, yeah. And she said, it's been very nice talking to you. And I said, and yes, ma'am, you as well. Y'all have a safe trip. And they go on. And I thought, man, where have I seen that woman before? And I just kept on. And so Diane gets there. Her plane finally lands. We get her baggage and... We're on the way home, and the airport was probably about 30 miles from my house, 40 miles maybe, so we're driving home. And, and I told her about this lady, and I said, I know I have seen that lady somewhere before in my life, but I don't know where, and I can't imagine knowing anybody like that. And just before we got to, to our house in Providence, I said, you know what? I just figured out who that woman looks like. And she said, who? I said, it looked like that woman that played I Dream of Genie on TV. I said, but it couldn't have been her. What would she have been doing in North, you know, in Greensboro, North Carolina? What was her name? And we thought for a few minutes, and Diane finally remembered her name. She said her name was Barbara Eden. I said, that's right, that's right, that was her name. It looked just like I Dream of Jeannie Girl. 
And I thought, well, whoa, she, but that couldn't have been her. But I know I've seen that woman somewhere. So we get home, and we're sitting there having dinner that night, and I was telling my mom and dad this story, and I said, you know, she kind of looked like that woman that played I Dream of Jeannie, and my mother started laughing. And I said, what's funny? And she said, it was her. I saw a story on the news tonight. She had been in town doing something uh, all week, and she was leaving today. And I looked at Diane and I said, I was talking to I Dream of Jeannie. I was talking to a famous person. And I didn't even know it. I know it now. And you know what? I bet if you were to find Barbara Eden, if she's still living, I don't even know. But if you if you could find Barbara Eden now, they'd say, hey, do you remember a kid in Greensboro, North Carolina in 1979, kind of tall and skinny and ugly with big ears and all that? You know, she'd probably say, huh? She wouldn't remember me from Adam. But I remember meeting her. You know what? That's just with a famous person. Let me tell you something. The thing about God is, <laughs> not only is He famous, He's God. He is the Lord of all. And listen, I met Him. I know who He is. But the best part is, He knows who I am. See, that's one good thing about Jesus being the good shepherd. He knows his sheep. He knows who I am. God knows me. Verse 3 right here says, He calls his sheep by name. He says in verse 14, I know my sheep and they know me. Aren't you glad that God knows us? And get this, He knows us even though we're sinners. He knows our weaknesses. He knows our failures. He knows our temptations. He knows our sins. He knows us better than anybody else. But He still knows us and claims us and died for us anyway. That's what makes Christ the Good Shepherd. He loves us in spite of our faith. Christ knows his sheep. But get this, Christ also calls us. It says here that he walks to the, to the, the sheep gate. He walks to the gate and even though there are numerous sheep out there, he calls us. And we hear his voice. He knows us and he calls us. Well, where does he call us from? You hear me? You ever think about that? Now in this story right here, he was calling the sheep out of the sheepfold. Where does he call us from? And where are we going? Well, in the technical sense that Christ is talking about, he calls his sheep out of the sheepfold where there are many, many, many sheep. He calls his out and leads them out to pasture to provide for them everything that they need. And that's what he does for us. Ultimately, one day, He will call us and we will hear Him and we will be called out of this world to be with Him forever. And I got to thinking about that. About people who met Christ. Who He called. Think about the disciples. He called them and they responded. They left what they were doing. One of them was a tax collector. He just walked by and said, follow me. And he quit what he was doing and followed him right then. All the disciples he called and they responded. Our kids get up here and sing the Zacchaeus song, you know. I used to love the story of Zacchaeus when I was a kid. Because he was a little short guy, he couldn't see. But he heard that Jesus was coming and he wanted to see Jesus. So he climbed up in a sycamore tree. And the Bible says when Jesus got to that tree, he looked up and he saw Zacchaeus and he called Zacchaeus by name. He said, Zacchaeus, come down because I'm going to your house. What did it say Zacchaeus did? He probably jumped out of that tree. He was eager to respond. Mary Magdalene, I think about her. She went to the tomb on Sunday morning stone was rolled away. She was upset because the body was gone. And she turned around and there was a man there that she didn't recognize, but she, 
she fell down crying and he said why are you crying woman she said because they've taken my lord and i know not where sir if you know where they've taken him please tell me and i will come and take him away and then he called her by name and he said mary and she recognized his voice he is the good shepherd and there's Lazarus. There's Lazarus. His sister said, Lord, if you had been here, he wouldn't have died. You could have healed him. Christ cried and said, take me to where he's buried. And he went out to the graveyard and he stood there and he called Lazarus by name and said, Lazarus, come forth. And Lazarus did. You know why? Because the good shepherd knows his sheep. He knows them by name. He calls to them and they hear his voice and they respond. Where does he call us from? He calls us from sin and death and he calls us to life. The question tonight is, have you heard the call? Do you recognize his voice? When God calls, when Christ the Good Shepherd calls, we recognize His voice. Don't hesitate. Respond quickly. Father, I ask that You would help us when You call to respond quickly. Lord, I pray that we would be very serious about hearing Your call and about following. Lord, I pray that you would be with us. I pray and I thank you that you are the good shepherd and you provide for us and you protect us. And Lord, I pray that every day. Father, may we have complete trust in you. For it's in your name we pray. Amen.